wanted to talk about the article that I published this morning at HartmanReport.com. Uh, my daily take, it's titled, Property Taxes Under Fire, North Dakota's Radical Plan to End Them. And, you know, property taxes are, you know, they go way back, right? The first property taxes in Europe, uh, well, there were some, yeah, the, the first property taxes in Europe were uh, written into law, or at least that I was able to find, in 1601. In, uh, in Great Britain, or in England, England at the time. And it, uh, you know, authorized property taxes. I tell the story, actually, of when I was 14 years old. Um, I, I bought, for 25 bucks, as I recall, I bought a, uh, a lot up in White Cloud, Michigan, which is near Nuego, near Grand Rapids. It's a little tiny town. And the lot was actually in a field, uh, surrounded by a forest that used to be a town that uh, the locals told me burned to the ground or got washed away in a flood back in the late 19th century, late 1800s. And I bought that lot because it was for sale in an auction from the county. And uh, there's a, when I lived in Michigan, there was this directory that was published of all the tax sales. Uh, the reason it was for sale was because somebody did not pay their property taxes on it, and so, boom, you know, this, the state sold it for the property taxes that were owed, and my recollection is that was 25 bucks. So, uh, I, you know, I paid the taxes on it for, I don't know, about two decades, and uh, then one of the guys, somebody who lived in that area, in fact, I think they had a, a mobile home uh, on an, uh, reached out to me when we were living in New Hampshire, and offered me 500 bucks for the lot, and so I sold it to him. But the point of the story is that unless you're a church or certain types of nonprofits in the United States, you can't actually own land in this country. You only rent it. Now, the, the liberal argument is that all land is actually the property of the nation, of all of us collectively, and we collectively kind of rent it to us individually, and that rent is called property taxes, and that that's a good thing. The kind of libertarian argument is that you can't own land unless you're a nonprofit, and that that's a terrible thing. I, I fr frankly am in the middle. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not opposed to property taxes. Uh, I am specifically opposed to property taxes funding schools and police departments. And the reason for that is that poor communities generally in America have crappy schools, poor schools, because their property tax base is so low they can't, they can't raise the appropriate amounts of revenue. And really upscale communities have really nice schools because property taxes are paying for the schools there too. And the same with the police departments. Some of your most dysfunctional police departments in America are in poor communities because they just don't have the resources to pay police well, to hire professional cops, uh, you know, to have technology, to, you know, whatever. So what's happening to this in two weeks is that we will find out whether North Dakota is going to bar all property taxes. And I think this is going to be fascinating. Now, uh, they tried this in 2012. The, there was a similar ballot measure in North Dakota in 2012 to ban property taxes, and it failed. And uh, uh, Doug posting over on my, on my uh, blog today, or my you know, newsletter at HartmanReport.com, said that uh, there was another state that did the same thing in the 60s, but uh, I Googled that and I couldn't see any evidence of it now, so apparently they repealed it. Um, back in the 70s, uh, in 77 in fact, Ireland did this. They, they ended all property taxes. And Louise and I were in Ireland around that time, in fact. We'd spent a couple weeks there. Uh, I'd gone over, we'd, we'd uh, spent a couple days uh, visiting uh, uh, the, the and an, another JFK book author uh, who, along with his wife, uh, he also wrote a, the book uh, about uh, J. Edgar Hoover, The Man in the Red Dress. And uh, so we stayed at their house for a day or two and then, uh, and then basically traveled around the country. And we were, we were driving through this little town on a dirt road 
And there was this, you know, natty looking gentleman in his 50s, you know, nicely dressed, uh, walking along. And we were looking for a place to have lunch. And so we pulled the car over and rolled down the window and said, uh, hey, any suggestions for a place to... And he says, well, you go down, a, down the street about three blocks and turn right and then go about a half a mile and then turn left. And he says, you know, that's too complicated. Can I get, jump in the back seat? And we were like, sure. So he hops in the back seat of the car and drives, you know, takes us to this pub at, where everybody knows him. And we end up, uh, you know, the, like the whole pub gets together and we're, and they're teaching Louise and I to sing songs in Gaelic. And, and he's teaching us the Gaelic alphabet. And we spent the whole day with him there. We were buying the drinks, frankly. <laughs> and turned out he was the town's postmaster and, his, and he was hiding out from his wife uh, and uh, not delivering the mail. So, uh, but anyhow, he, he, uh, he made this comment. We, we got to talking about, you know, well, Irish politics. And uh, he made this comment that uh, nobody should ever lose their gaff, their home, uh, just because they can't afford to pay the government its annual whack, you know, which is taxes, <laughs> property tax. His name was Mike Mansfield, in fact. Um, we, we kept in touch with him for a couple of years after that. But the point is that Ireland in 1977 said, okay, that's it, no more property taxes. Now, they backed away from this. It, it didn't work. In 2009, they brought back a fee. Uh, in 2012, they called it the household charge. And finally, in 2013, they just brought back the... But there's a bunch of countries that don't have property taxes. The Cayman Islands, Fiji, Malta, Cook Islands, Monaco, United Arab Emirates, Dominica, Georgia, Bahrain, Kuwait, uh, Georgia the country, Liechtenstein, Oman, Grenada, Vanuatu, uh, Vanuatu, however you say that, Saudi Arabia, Turks and Caicos, Sri Lanka, Faroe Islands, Qatar, Brunei, Croatia, Mauritania, and the Seychelles. So, you know, bottom line, this is not a completely radical idea. But what I think is fascinating is that North Carolina is saying, okay, we're going to put this on the ballot. And now, you know, other states have tried kind of, well, the big one is California, Proposition 13 in 1978. Howard Jarvis got this thing passed, which says that as long as you live in your house, your property taxes are not, at least not go up at the rate that everybody else does do. Um, the problem with Jarvis's Prop 13 is that it also applies to commercial property. In fact, there's a kind of a conspiracy theory that Howard Jarvis was a front man for the commercial real estate industry. And so it's dis distorting real estate prices and markets and things. But for residents, what it does is, you know, as your neighborhood becomes more and more expensive, particularly with gentrification, you don't get priced out. The big problem with property taxes is when people retire and their income drops, or if they downscale or their job gets downsized and their income drops, or if they get laid off and their income goes to zero, they can lose their house simply because they can't pay the taxes on it. And, you know, I totally get that. And I, you know, I'm kind of a fan of something like Prop 13, only not for commercial property, just for residential property. And I'm also, as I said, a fan of, of taking police and and fire and uh, schools out of property tax funding and having the state pay for those things so that they're standardized across the entire state. But, and, and you can read the whole piece, you know, over at HartmanReport.com. Like I said, it's free. You can, and, and the, all the hot links to everything everywhere. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I think this is going to be fascinating. And I predict if North Carolina passes this proposition, uh, this measure, this, this uh, ballot measure, uh, you're going to see a bunch of states doing the same thing uh, in 2026 and 2028. It's going to it's going to go national. I mean, we'll see. I mean, you know, a lot of people thought Prop 13 would go national, and, and to the best of my knowledge, it didn't. Um, but you know, like I said, Prop Prop 13 was kind of problematic. So, anyhow, uh, how Herbert Hoover deported Mexicans and swept up Americans. Stay tuned. I'll be right back with that.